temptation in the book at Jesus, yet he was without sin, right? So you know what the good news about that is? Whatever area you're struggling with in life, Jesus understands. Jesus is crying out through the Bible, listen, don't close your eyes to the needs of people all around you. I put them around you so that you can be Jesus to them, and as you do, you will find true life. All of us are created to do something specific, and I think that when God begins to put something on your heart, I think he also begins to release a passion and a desire for that. And so I had, though I was kind of afraid to speak at first, you know, it was kind of nerve-wracking for me, but but I had such a passion to see people change. More and more, I begin to see truths of the Word. I begin to see God's Word play out in my life the way that it said it would and have those experiences. And the more transformation I experienced, the more passionate and hungry I became to see other people experience those same transformations. Most of us are under this opinion as well, is that we've been sold to by the world that the path to happiness, the path to fulfillment, is getting more and more for ourselves. But what Jesus is saying is exactly the opposite is true. I think sometimes they just need someone to get out there and just be real with them and say, hey, listen, here's where I've been, here's what I've experienced, here's what the Bible says, and, you know, you can say whatever you want, but these are the truths of God's Word. You're trying to think of, like, the most pure thing you can think about. You're like, I rebuke you, naked woman. <laughs> In the name of my pure, sweet, innocent, and fully clothed baby Jesus, come out. And you try to click off of it, and all these pop-ups start coming up on your screen, and you can't click off of them fast enough, you know, you got to resort to like computer exorcism or something, you know? And those boundaries are meant to protect you, not to steal your fun. I'll tell you what, you guys, you gotta realize there is a battle that is going on for your identity. I think most people um, struggle in their walk with God because they, they kind of come into a relationship with Jesus holding back. And so they go, God, I, I know I need you and I want everything you have to give. I just don't want to trust you with my whole life. And so they kind of grab a hold of God with one hand and hold on to their life with the other hand. And so they just end up with kind of a lackluster experience with God. I really have a passion to see people walk in complete surrender and, and to understand what that looks like on a daily basis because in my experience and from what I can read in the Word, that's the key to experiencing God. Sometimes we love the things we're doing that we know aren't right and we love them so much that we keep holding on to them instead of, instead of allowing us to follow the Lord and it keeps us from experiencing His love. And I mean, I was pent up with anger from my dad. I mean, I was an abused child and abandoned. I came to this and it changed me. It showed me that I don't need to be angry. I can be, you know, happy with what I got and what I've been given. God that pursues you, that loves you, that doesn't care what you've done. He's ready to turn his back on those things as you ask forgiveness and invade your life. That, that thinks about the smallest details of you that is consumed with thoughts about you all the time. That wants to welcome you home at any moment and restore your life. This is a God whose love is pursuing you.